Hello everyone and welcome to this instructional video for Communication 600, Writing the Research Project Outline, here at the University of Maryland University College. Hi everyone, I'm your host David Taylor and welcome to this video about one of the most important assignments in this course, your Research Project Outline, the outline for the centerpiece, the cornerstone of this course in Graduate Communications. Now here's my promise about your research project outline. If you write it well, if your outline has all the sections in it and they're well thought out and connected and logical, if you do a good job on your outline, your writing will take care of itself. The paper will almost write itself. I promise. Let's take a look at this sample outline so you can see what I mean. Now, in this sample outline, you're going to begin, of course, with your introduction. But this isn't just any introduction. This is an introduction for a major graduate school research project and therefore it should contain the following five sections. Section number one, you need to talk about the importance of that subject. This is where you hook your reader. This is where you establish the problem, the cause bellus for your doing this paper. Section number two is you're going to give a brief review of the research you did. What did you do? Did you experiment? Did you examine literature? Did you talk to people? What did you do during this project? And number three, the need for your research. This is where you establish your research space. Remember that uh, project? Remember that earlier conference where you had to carve out your research, your research niche? That's what we're talking about here. Here, you establish the clear need for the information that you're about to provide. Section number four, you're going to state the purpose of your paper. This is like a two statement. To analyze, to find, to differentiate, to bring together, to overview, to solve. Whatever the purpose of your paper was, express it here. Now, that purpose is distinct from the thesis of your paper. The thesis of your paper is the actual statement of your position, the actual statement of your conclusion, the overall outcome of what you found. Now, that's the introduction section of your, of your paper. Certainly, to accomplish all of those five things, it's going to be more than your one paragraph usually found in your five-paragraph essay. Now, the sec second section you've heard a little bit about before, and it's called the brief review of literature. Notice the word brief. Now, you've already written a formal review of literature, and that thing was three to eight pages long, five to eight pages long. This is a brief review of literature. What's the difference? Oh, about two to seven pages. <laughs> In this brief review of literature, you're going to hit only the highlights, only the high marks of what you found in your formal review of literature. You still have the same groupings that you found or that you used in your formal review of literature. Same grouping, same way of organizing or approaching or viewing your body of research that you looked at, but you're hitting only the highlights. This thing shouldn't be more than one to two pages long. Okay, so those two sections together constitute the prefatory material for your paper. Now comes the body of your paper. In the body of your paper, you're going to begin, and this probably doesn't apply to a lot of you, you're going to begin with this third section with any methods, techniques that you used in conducting any original research. And that original research consists of first-person interviews for which you have transcripts and permission. Second, any survey instruments that you designed and administered to your population that you were studying. And three, any experimentation that you carried out. So any of those original data collection methods that you undertook, you want to describe exactly what you did right here so that other, peop they can, other people can understand what you did and other people can possibly replicate what you did. Then comes, of course, what everybody's been waiting for, the body of your paper, your arguments, your arguments in support of your thesis. And all you've got to do is state argument number one 
and then boom, 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 give the evidence for it. Now, I've only got two items of evidence listed here. You can have as many as you need. Just like I've only got three points or three arguments here, but you need to have as many points or as many arguments as you need. Another thing you might need, look right down here where it says counterclaims. Now, there are going to be times when you're arguing a point and you know that there are significant counterclaims against it. If you're saying, well, the thimerosal and the vaccines did have a causative effect on developing regressive autism. If you're going to make that claim, you got to know there's a huge counterclaim against that, people who feel the opposite. You have to acknowledge that claim, and then you get to refute it. So keep that in mind whenever you're writing the body of your paper. Of course, the last part of your paper is the conclusion. Like the introduction, I want it structured in a certain way. And that way includes these four sections. One, you're going to review the purpose of your paper, that two statement, to find, to analyze, to understand, to overview. Second, you're going to state, again, the actual thesis of your paper. Sometimes it's good to have the same words at the beginning and the same words at the end. It's a long paper. Now it's time to wrap it up and remind people. Third, you're going to identify any gaps in that research. Along the way, when you've done all this research, there have probably been questions that came up that you couldn't answer. Why? Because no one's done the research yet. And so these are the gaps that you're going to identify for your colleagues, for your readers in this paper. And then, of course, after you've identified the gaps, what are you going to do? You're going to propose areas for research. You can actually propose types of research projects to be, got, to be done to fill in those gaps. Okay, there's your sample outline. It's, it's the skeleton. Now here is how one student uh, filled out or fleshed out that skeleton. Here is an actual model, and I call it a model because it was an excellent attempt. Here's a model outline based upon those categories that you just saw. Notice how this student took those same categories and simply filled in his information. You do that, and you're going to be fine. This is two pages long. All of the sections are represented. All of the sections are filled in with his content. That's a great outline. You write one just like it, and I promise the writing will take care of itself. Talk to you later.